Hello everyone and welcome to Faith Love Fellowship Church. We are delighted to have you here and uh, we are studying the book of Revelation. So we uh, uh, want you to get your Bible, get your notepad, um, write down the things that the Spirit of God brings to your attention. Amen. Uh, we're talking about um, end time events, uh, but the Word of God is uh, so powerful that He can answer questions, He can minister life to you, bring wisdom, understanding, um, help, aid, comfort, whatever, through His Word. Amen. And so I commend you for joining with us to get into the Word of God. And uh, we're going to pick up as soon as we pray and um, bless the Lord. Father, we love you so much. We are so grateful for these times to be able to spend together with you, to spend together with your Holy Spirit, with your holy precious word, and people of my precious faith. We thank you, O Lord, that uh, you will cause this message to come into the hands and the ears of those who need to hear this message in the name of Jesus, Lord. Um, it's predominantly to, uh, to unbelievers, but it will help the church to realize that we have a job to do, and that is to pray and to share the gospel so that people can come to salvation in Jesus Christ. Lord, thank you for our salvation. Thank you for uh, your comfort and wisdom, understanding, and uh, we just say thank you, praise you, bless you in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us again tonight. Uh, we, uh, again, and I said it on purpose the way that I did, uh, this message, this part of the book of Revelation is really uh, for people who have not yet uh, bowed their knee to the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, it just doesn't make sense. Uh, as we are reading and studying, it seems as though all kinds of things are going wrong, all kinds of difficulty, hardship, horrors, uh, tragedies, and, and, and um, the people that are, that are remaining, so many of them, uh, are, are blaspheming God, they're cursing God, they're, 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 they, they're, there's no repentance, there's no, there's no seeking Him. You know, it, you know it, it's, it, it doesn't make sense. The devil is, is out of his mind because it doesn't make sense to blaspheme God and, and yet declare that you don't believe in him and yet you want to speak bad of him. Well, that doesn't make sense. If you want to speak bad of somebody, you're, you're believing that that person exists. You're believing that somehow your words are going to affect them. And it's just ridiculous and, and insane, but that's the way the devil is. And he will stir people up to such hatred against the very one who can, who can save their people's lives, who, who, can, who can deliver them, who can rescue them. Amen. The Bible tells us and John tells us, John 10 tells us the thief comes to steal, to kill, to destroy. But I have come that you might have life and life more abundantly. And so the, the word of God says that you might have life. And he's not only talking about eternal life in the future. He's talking about life, eternal life, everlasting life, the quality of life. You can have it now. Amen. Because you have the ability to bring the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart and to know what it's like to uh, never be alone, to be finally satisfied, amen. He is the desire of, of man's hearts, all of us. We each have a, a, a God uh, hole, vacuum in us, and we try to fill it with things that are horizontal on this planet and, and they don't work. And that's why people who have arrived, whether it be rock stars, whether it be models, whether it be this, that, and the other thing, people have, you know, 12 houses, private jets and everything else, they're not happy. They're, there's drugs, there's alcohol, they're, they can't hold their marriages together. They can't keep their families together. There, there's just such pain and, and, and hardship and difficulty. And, and they're looking for, you know, for, for their, their who they are 
in society and it's not there. So they're going to go to a, you know, a doctor for plastic surgery and, and this and that and the other thing to alter themselves to try to you know, paint that picture that they're that they're doing good, that their their life is is all together, but truthfully, their life is 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 falling apart, and they don't know what to do with it, right? And uh, and so the the word of God tells us the thief comes to steal, to kill, to destroy, but I have come that you might have life and life more abundantly. So accept me into your heart. It's reasonable. Amen. It's it's uh, it, it makes sense. You know in your heart it's right. So rather than blaspheme God or curse God, just come to Him humbly and sincerely and say, "Lord, forgive me." And He will, and He will draw you to Himself. Amen. And, and you'll know what it's like to be to be genuinely loved, to be to belong to a family, amen? So many people, our families are broken. That's why gangs are so relevant. It seems that, you know, there's so much stuff going on. There's all kinds of things because people are craving a family. They're craving acceptance. Yeah. And so they're, they're turning to all these different alternatives, all demonic alternatives of every, and they come to steal, kill, and destroy. And people are dying of AIDS and people are dying of this and people are dying of that and, and people are confused and, and they don't know what gender they are and they don't know this and they don't know that there, there's just confusion. Yeah, the devil is coming and he's stealing, he's killing, he's destroying. Visions and, and destinies and, and creativity and everything else and so much more. You know, women are amazing. Hallelujah. That's right. men, men are amazing. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. So if we find out who we are according to God, who he designed us and planned us to be, it's amazing. Amen? Yeah. Why be confused? Why walk around not knowing who you are? When you can know whose you are, you can know who you are, what he has done for you, what he has made available to you, amen? amen. The Bible is the answer to all the questions. Everywhere it says that he did this for you, he did for you. Amen. All you need to do is believe it, That's amen? Right. Thank him for it, hallelujah, amen. hallelujah. In him is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. All you need to do is believe that. And, and, and love and comfort and peace that, that, that transcends anything that this world can possibly offer becomes your possession, amen? It's so amazing and wonderful. So I said all that because, you know, we are up to a point where the earth is being, the humanity is being sifted. Um, there's, uh, there are, um, you know, where, where I work part-time, uh, over at uh, one of the farms here in the community, there is a um, there's a gem mining um, um, display, and you can purchase a, a bag of basically dirt. And there's a saying, I believe it's net called, and you and there's a small bag that's clean and perfect, and and then there's a plaque that shows you what you gems you might be able to find. And you go over to the water, you pour the gems into this net. Same, same things uh, at all. And, it, and all the dirt goes through the holes in it. And what you're left with are the, the uh, gemstones that are there, semi-precious gemstones and whatever. And, and it's a lot of fun and it's a marvelous thing. And, and that's, you know, how I can kind of describe what's happening here. You know, God is sifting humanity. And, and he doesn't want to uh, destroy humanity. The Bible says he's long, the husband waits. He's so patient and long suffering. He's waiting for the precious fruit of the earth. Are you with me? Yeah. And so what happens, you know, I watch children um, when I, they are, I like the stones, I like the gemstones and all the rest of it. But there are some children who, who don't, the parents either don't buy it for them or they, they, they can't buy it for them or whatever the case may be. So quite often um, what I will do is I will uh, go through the nets that are there and I'll put all the stones together and then I'll put them you know, in, in ready view of these children. 
and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll give them a bag, the, bag, the dirt comes in a bag, so I'll give them a bag, I'll try to clean it the best I can, and I'll give it to them, and, and though somebody else has taken the bigger gemstones, there's lots of little pieces that are still there. And when you see a child pick up a, a piece of, of amethyst that's so tiny, but it's so beautiful, or, tur or turquoise, that beautiful blue, or, or a piece of quartz, or whatever these things are, they pick up the tiniest piece, and there's such glee, there's such joy, because, they, and they'll keep sifting, keep sifting, keep sifting until, you know, all they, they're, they're putting these tiny little things in their bag. Why? They consider those tiny little specks precious. And that's kind of the way God is. Amen. God is sifting. And as people get saved, he continues to sift mankind. And as people get saved and people give their hearts to the Lord, he continues to sift. And there are people who refuse and they will not and they blaspheme his name and they die in their sin and they go to hell. That's where the dirt goes. It's washed away. And, and it, they just, just keep sifting. And here we are, there have been many, 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 many um, uh, precious gems, human beings that have given their life to the Lord Jesus Christ that have been already taken out of the dirt, so to speak, amen? We're all born from the dirt. Um, and so, uh, uh, but there's the sifting going on because God's gonna get every single bit that he can, amen? And, and it's just, I know it's not the greatest example, but it just helps us to understand that that's where we're at here. Um, Revelation chapter 16, it's the fifth bowl. Uh, we mentioned it last time, it's a plague of darkness. I'm just catching you up. And there have been, this is number five. These are the very worst. This is the end. This is the final sifting. We're about to come to the, to the end where there's, people have made their decision. But even in the midst of this, even in the midst of these horrors and these things, there are people who are calling upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and they are being saved. But the world has become so out of control and the Antichrist, and, and who is the beast, who is, who is Satan's servant in the earth, and the false prophet who is a worker together with the beast, and they are... They are affecting people. They are deceiving the nations. The people that are left are, are worshiping the beast. They're worshiping the, the idol. They're taking the mark of the beast. God says, don't you do it because if you do take that mark and worship the beast, there is, you're, there is no more hope for you. And, and so it's horrible, but there's this sifting going on. And we mentioned in Revelation 16, 10 and 11, then the fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast and his kingdom kingdom became full of darkness and they these are the believers in the beast in the antichrist those who are worshiping the people that are on the planet at this point it says and they gnawed their tongues because of the pain they blasphemed the god of heaven because of their pains and their sores and did not repent of their deeds so you would think that god would say enough is enough and we're getting there but he's still sifting, amen? He's waiting for the precious fruit of the earth. He wants to find every little positive speck of precious, which is a person who calls upon the Lord Jesus Christ, amen? The Bible says we are built together of living stones. We are the temple of the most high God. That's together. Amen? We are, we are light living stones. We're not dead stones. We're not, you know, gemstones or whatever. We are precious living stones. Amen? Hallelujah. And we have the ability to praise God and to worship God and, and to adore Him and, and proclaim how good He is and how wonderful He is. Amen? And together we make up a temple of praise unto God. And, he, and that's His plan. That was His plan all along. Amen? And, but that's where we're the happiest. That's where the most, we are the most content. That's when we, that's when we are mostly the person who God created us to be, amen? There's freedom, there's, there's life in it, glory to God. Everything else is death. Everything else to deny the existence of God is to deny life himself. And the, other, the alternative to that is death. But God doesn't want it, amen? He wills all men to be saved. He don't want you to die. 
The Bible says he takes no pleasure in the destruction, even of the wicked. Even at this point, God's not saying, oh, I can't wait to, to just, just show them who I am and, and destroy them. All. No, he's continuing to sift, hoping that there are, even at the very last moment, there are those who are going to repent and turn to him with all of their heart. Are you with me? So this is a pretty horrible picture, all right? Amen. Uh, those under the judgment of this fifth bowl stand, as it were, on the shores of the lake of fire. This is winding down very quickly, but there's still hope. Amen? There's still help. God is still offering salvation to whosoever will. Amen? God is not offended. The Bible tells us about love in 1 Corinthians. It takes no offense. They can blaspheme his name. He don't like it but he's not offended by it. He's going to keep on loving them. He's going to keep on trying to help them. Are you with me? And when they finally make up their mind and, and judgment comes upon the earth because of their unrepentant hearts and their sin, not because God is fed up with people, never. Are you listening? Because of their unrepentant hearts and their sin, and their choices to, to uh, not accept the gift of salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ, but to buy the lies of the devil and the Antichrist and all the rest, it's going to finally get to the point where now you will spend eternity with the one you chose. And those who choose life will spend eternity with God. And those who choose death and blaspheme the God of the heavens will choose death and will will experience death eternally. Separation from God. Didn't want him when you were alive. You won't be able to have him while you're dead. Eternal separation and, and shame and embarrassment and, 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 and horrors and tortures and, and, and darkness and fear and fire and burning. And, and it says there are worms that, that devour and yet your flesh is not is not um, lessened. In other words, that you continue the sensation of being devoured alive and in a lake of fire that burns beyond our, our comprehension. And God didn't create it for any mankind. He created it for Satan and, and his fallen angels, the demons that he, that he um, deceived into following him. It was not created for mankind. God does not want one human being to go there. That's why the Bible says, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever would believe in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen? You with me, my brothers and sisters? So anyway, um, notice the end, it says here, in man's sinful condition, he increases his sin when under God's judgment, the very time he should forsake his sin. He did not, they did not repent of their sin deeds. Okay? Oh, thank you, Lord. Anyway, thank you, Lord, that we know him. Amen? Amen. Revelation 16, 12, um, and verse uh, 16, the sixth bowl. The, arm, the, the armies are gathered for a great battle. Armies are gathered for a great battle. You have heard, pretty much everybody has heard about Armageddon and don't necessarily understand, but it, it, can, it is comprised of all of these people who have bought the lie of the Antichrist who is Satan's man on the earth and the false prophet who is another representation of Satan's man on the earth, amen? And they work together, political, uh, social, economic, uh, spiritual, you know, all, all areas, deceiving, and, and, uh, and, and deceiving and deceiving and people are buying it and people are worshiping and people are, 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 are accepting and people are, are advocating it and those who speak against it are, are immediately uh, um, destroyed. So there are people getting saved, but they don't live long because they're, they're hunted like animals and they are quickly dispatched. Because Satan knows that if he allows the gospel to continue to be preached, others are going to come to salvation. So he's doing everything he can do to stop the preaching of the gospel, but he can't. Because the, the, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is eternal. And it's going to find a way. He is the way. Amen? He's the truth. 
And there are going to be people wanting truth right up to the very end, even at the shores of the, of the lake of fire. So the sixth bowl, armies are gathered for a great battle. Then the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up so that the way of the kings from the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. That's Satan. For they are spirits of demons performing signs which go out to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Behold, I am coming as a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And they gathered them together to the place called in Hebrew, Armageddon. So listen to it. I, I mean, it's, to me, it's marvelous. You know, it's horrible. I know it is. It's terrible. I understand. But notice, with all of this, armies are gathered for a great battle. The devil is going to do everything he can to deceive the, the remaining people on the planet. And people are still being born. They're, and they're very prolific people are being born. These, in these ungodly nations, and these ungodly, you know, religions of the world, and all of these things that would, that would uh, deny the very existence of God, even by giving, uh, giving credit to, a, to another uh, uh, being, calling another being God. And, and they're not. There's only one who has the, that right to that name. There's only one Lord. There's only one who is, is worthy of that title, of that name. There is only one God. There's only one creator. There's only one savior. There's only one name given under heaven whereby we may be saved. There's only one. Amen. But the devil's going to deceive people in thinking that he owns it and he doesn't. Mm -hmm. That's right. He, he is the, the ultimate um, deceiver, counterfeit. Even the things that he is trying to do are counterfeits of what God has done, all in an attempt to deceive people. He knows he's, he's a liar. He knows he's defeated. He knows he's going to go to hell. He knows that all his followers are going to go to hell. He wants to get back at God. And the only way he can get back at God is by deceiving people. So that people, instead of turning to God and come to know him as father, they, they turn to the devil and they call him father. But there's no loyalty in, in hell. There, there's, no, there's no warmth. There's no family. It's a, it's, a, it's a deception. People who believe the lie have been conned to the nth degree. There's going to be a rude, horrible I can't say awakening because it's just going to be a realization. Mm -hmm. It says here that there's weeping, gnashing of teeth, and regret, and remorse, and anxiety, and futility, embarrassed. I mean, the list goes on and on. Shame and guilt and, oh my God. And God does not want you involved in it. Are you listening, my brothers and sisters? Hallelujah. But when is the time to repent? Today. Today is the day of salvation. Amen. There are many examples in the Bible. I'm not speaking doom or gloom. I want all of you to live a full life. I believe God for that I will see his salvation. I will live a full life. But the Bible warns us that we're not promised tomorrow. That we need not put off till tomorrow what we need to do today. And salvation is the last Thing, of everything that you should procrastinate about. Amen? You must receive him priority number one. Are you listening, my brothers and sisters? Amen. Yeah. Because the alternative is beyond our comprehension and it's horrible and God does not want that for any human being. So, they've gathered the great river Euphrates the waters were dried up so that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Have you ever heard of the waters drying up before? Yeah, when Moses brought the people through the Red Sea 
and, uh, and uh, d deliver them out of the bondage of, of Egypt. Well, this is going to be uh, repeated and there will be a way made for these, these armies. And, uh, and notice it says here, uh, the part that I like about this, it says here, um, which go out to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. So they think it's their day. They think we're going to call a holiday and we're going to call it, and they're going to come up with all kinds of ideas of what they should call that day. But here it says it will be called the day of God Almighty. Amen? Because it's all about him. It's always been all about him. Are you with me, my brothers and sisters? It's not only, you know, politics is, is important, sure it is, but it's not about politics. It's not about, you know, uh, all the things that we busy our lives with. He is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. When he was baptized by John, the heavens opened and God said, this is my beloved son, hear him. In other words, he's the focus of life itself. Amen. Amen. And that call went out to every human being on the planet. That's why God was very careful, specific, to write it down so that we can read it and read it and read it and read it and we can preach it and tell other people about it and help them to come to salvation. Amen? So um, let's continue on down. <coughs> In, uh, it says, gather them to battle. Notice this battle is not nation against nation. This battle is nations against God. You with me? Mm -hmm. This is one of three important battles mentioned in prophecy. The battle of Gog, Magog, and her allies come against Israel in Ezekiel 38 and 39. The battle of Armageddon, when the Antichrist leads the world system against the returning Jesus here in Revelation. And then the final battle, when Satan and his allies, after the millennium, make war against God. And we'll get to that too. So here, the great day of God Almighty. The winner of this battle is apparent. It is the great day of God, not the great day of man, not the great day of the Antichrist, not the great day of the dragon. Are you listening? Mm -hmm. Then he says, behold, I am coming as a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked and see, and they see his shame. It doesn't mean that he is a thief in the night. He says, he's gonna come like a thief in the night. There are those when you don't expect him. Mm -hmm. you know, It'll never happen, God forbid, but if a thief were to try to come to your home, he would not announce himself. For the most part, he wouldn't just show up in the middle of the day and just walk up to your door and your home and he hears all the noise in your house and he just decides he's gonna try to walk in and try to steal from you. It is happening, sad to say. You know, the people who steal people's packages off their, off their uh, porches. You know, thieves have gotten very bold, very, uh, very greedy, beyond greed. It's demonic, right? It's true. But he says it will be like a thief in the night. In other words, you won't know it's coming. It will just show up. Jesus said he didn't even know the day when he would return. Only the Father knows. Are you with me? And so there will become a time where, where the Lord will return and it will be like a thief in the night. And uh, it just is like a thief, not necessarily the night, it could be day, it could be night, doesn't matter. The point is, blessed is he or she who watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. So it's the story of the, the virgins, that there were some that were prepared when the, when the um, bridegroom came, and there's some that were not prepared. And Jesus was, was focusing on how important it is that we live prepared, amen? That we live prepared. One of the ways we live prepared, I mean, it was the very first thing Jesus addressed, that when you get born again, is that you repent from dead and evil works. So living a clean life is the first step. It's not the end result, it's the first step. Living without sin in your life. 
Are you with me? Yeah. And, and, and making choices that substantiate that, that decision that you made. And God doesn't say, oh, you can't do that. A lot of people say, oh, I can't do that. Oh, there's no way I can do that. No, the Bible says that you can do all things through Christ. Amen? Amen. Through him. Hallelujah, through faith that he's got your back, that he's stronger than the temptation you face, that whatever that thing that's, that's trying to destroy you that comes from the pit of hell, that he has given you the grace, the supernatural ability to overcome it. Amen? Mm -hmm. But you're gonna have to believe it, you're gonna have to choose it, you're gonna have to defend yourself against the onslaughts of temptation. Amen? You're gonna have to, to, to declare it out of your mouth, greater is he who's in me than he who's in the world. And I can, <clears throat> hallelujah. And oh, no, 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 wait, brother, you don't understand, that, that's impossible. No, 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 no. With God, nothing's impossible. And nothing is impossible to me and you who believe that nothing is impossible with God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And just fill your heart and mind with the word of God and then let that be the only thing that comes out of your mouth. Amen. The Bible says, amen, that meditate night and day. Let not other, anything else come out of your mouth. Just let nothing, nothing else comes out of your mouth but the word of God. And, and I know people will say, oh, there's no way I can do that. I, God wouldn't ask you or tell you to do it if you couldn't do it. He says, you want victory? Do this. It's as easy as that. My brothers and sisters, it's the truth. And, and, and as long as we play games and go around in circles and say, well, I don't see it that way and this group that I hang with don't see it that way and, and my education doesn't back that up, you know what? Is Let God be true and all men be liars. God, God is right. Amen. Make up your mind. God is right. Always he's right. Amen. And, and, if, and if you make the determination he's right, then there's going to be a time of repentance. Come to him sincerely and contritely and, and genuinely and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm making decisions um, based on ignorance, and I'm sorry. Come on, David said it beautifully, hide me from presumptuous sins. Now, don't let them have their sway over me. God is bigger, God is greater, God is real, more real than, there's nothing more real than God. Amen, hallelujah, the truth. So, hallelujah. So this place called, in Hebrew, Armageddon. Revelation 16, verse 17 through 21. The seven bowls, the seventh bowl, which is the final judgments. The seventh bowl, the final judgments. Then the seventh bowl, excuse me, I'm so sorry. And then the seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air. This is the last bowl, by the way, of this portion. Are you with me? And a loud voice came out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, it is done. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm sorry. <That's> you. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Sorry about that. I work at a farm all day. I'm constantly breathing in dirt and dust. And okay. I'm looking forward to cleaning myself out when I get home. Sorry. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, so the seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air and a loud voice came out of the temple of heaven saying, it is done. And there were noises and thunderings and lightnings and there was a great earthquake, such a mighty and great earthquake as had not occurred since men were on the earth. Wow. Now the great city was divided into three parts. The cities of the nations fell and great Babylon was removed remembered before God to give her cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Then every island fled away and the mountains were not found and great hail from heaven fell upon men, each hailstone about the weight of a talent. Okay. Now some of the, um, the commentators, they saying that these uh, hailstones weighed up to a hundred pounds. A hundred pounds. Now this was not, again, this is not God's judgment. 
This is, the, this is judgment upon the sin. Are you with me? I've told you countless times before, judgment, a thief roams about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And when he sees sin, especially in a Christian's life, that's his way in. He's already got unbelievers, those who don't want God. He's already got them. But he targets looking for Christians that he can devour. And sin is the door. That's why the Lord Jesus, first thing he addressed is be holy as I am holy. Amen? Confess your sin. Get rid of it. Get it out of your life. Don't let it linger. Don't let it you know, be a part of who you are. Don't let it continue because it will bring judgment. Are you with me, my brothers and sisters? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so the Bible says the curse, causeless, cannot come. The only way the curse can come is if there's a cause, if there's sin. So that's why the Lord takes such a a fierce stance against it because judgment is looking for a place and these judgments that are occurring are so horrible because the sin is so horrible and so rampant. Excuse me a moment. Now, I omitted something on purpose. I didn't finish. Revelation 16, 17 to 21. I told you, and great hail from heaven fell upon men, each hailstone about the weight of a talent, maybe up to a hundred pounds each. And notice, men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, since that plague was exceedingly great. It just shows you the condition of people's hearts at this time. And yet I'm always going to remind you, even here, there are people that are getting saved. Mm -hmm. There are people that are, that are crying out to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. You know, we might say that Revelation 16 is a great chapter. It describes great evil, a great city, great Babylon, Revelation 16, 19. It describes great tools of judgment, great heat, a great river dried up, a great earthquake, great hail, and great plagues. but it describes a great God, his great voice, and his great day of victory. Amen? Mm -hmm. Aren't you glad we're on his side? Amen? Yeah. Now I'm gonna end with this, my brothers and sisters. Choose you today who you're gonna serve. Amen? The Bible says life and death is in the power of the tongue. You can choose, it's up to you. The Lord Jesus says, life and death, amen? Death is all around you. Everywhere you look, there's death. Horizontal de deception, weirdness, hatred, confusion, deception, it's just everywhere around us. There's darkness everywhere around us. But Jesus says, but I'm life. And then he says, choose life that you and your descendants may live. So in all of this that's going on in our world, in every arena, there is one that stands out from all of it. And he says, I am the way. 
I am the truth. I am the life. And when we say, yes, Jesus, it separates us from all that death, all that darkness, all that, all that judgment. Are you with me, my brothers and sisters? Mm -hmm. Jesus says, I go to prepare a place for you so where I am, you will be with me forever. That's peace. That's, sense of, that's a family. That's a sense of belonging. That's comfort that's beyond our comprehension. Are you with me, my brothers and sisters? That's an act of love that's bigger than, than, than we can even comprehend. Amen? Yeah. How great the love of God is. Amen? God so loved, he gave. And we are privileged, amen, to receive that gift and say with a humble, contrite, genuine, sincere heart, not words, heart. Father, forgive me. I have become filth before you, but you sent your son that I might be saved. I receive you, Jesus, as my Lord and Savior. I believe that you are God Almighty and there is none else. I believe that you came to this earth born of a virgin, lived a sinless life to show me the way. And then you took upon yourself the sin that I deserved, the punishment that I deserved, the, the hell that I deserved. And when you rose from the dead, you set me free. Amen. And I believe it and I receive it. And I thank you and I'll spend the rest of my life thanking you and blessing you and living for you. Hallelujah. Amen. And I thank you so very much. Help me, oh God. Help me, oh God, to find a church that preaches the word of faith, the word of God. Amen. Amen. Where I'm loved, I'm accepted, and I'll be challenged to live right to the honor and glory of God. And I thank you for hearing me and saving me. Thank you for the gift of the mighty Holy Spirit. I invite him. Fill me with your spirit, O oh God. And I will live for you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, Thank amen. You, Thank, you, Thank, you, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All of heaven rejoices over those who make that decision. God bless you. Amen. We're delighted to be a part of this with you. And uh, we're honored that you would tune in and, uh, and watch these, uh, these services. We bless you. We praise God for each and every one of you. And uh, those of you here in the church, of course, we love you. We appreciate you. And uh, next week, we'll pick up right from where we left off and we'll, get, uh, we'll continue on in the book of Revelation. Amen. Father, we thank you for the night. We thank you for your blessing on your word and the Holy Spirit who will keep it ever before those who need to hear it, Father, in the name of Jesus. We rejoice that those who called upon your name are saved. Their names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. They will see life. They will not see destruction. We thank you. We praise you for it always in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for traveling mercies. As we return to our homes, may our homes be blessed, may our sleep be sweet. We thank you for it in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time. God bless you. Good night. Thank you all.